Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I am the pixelated incarnation of some guy. And thank you very much for choosing to watch Overanalyzed Adventures. Now for today, I have 2016's very first commercially developed point and click adventure game, at least that I know of. And hey, it's only 26 days into the new year, and we got a hot new fresh point and click to talk about. Now this game is called Order the Thorn, and is developed by Infamous Quest of Quest for Infamy fame, and before that, being known as infamous adventures you know the guys who updated the old classic sierra games using ags but that's not what we're here to talk about instead we're here to talk about their hot new fresh ip that was kickstarted along with a prequel for quest for infamy for thirty thousand dollars so now folks let's see what infamous quest has done with other people's money long ago in the time before time began now, not to interrupt this awesome intro, because I assure you it is pretty awesome. But I do have a question about this realm that exists in a time before time. Are we dealing with some weird metaphysical universe here that exists outside the norms of relativity? Because if that's the case, I'm expecting some pretty trippy and freaky stuff now, game. The great realm of Yuir prospered under the guardianship of the benevolent Order of Knights, who protected and guided the people of its many kingdoms. Yeah, there's a long pause here for some reason. I don't know why. Let's fast forward through it. These knights were known as the Order of the Thorn. And another one now. I guess it's for all you slow readers, or people who are deaf and hard of hearing. I'll consider it of them, and no, that's not sarcasm. The price of peace is not so easily won. For where there is good, evil is not far behind. These are the stories of the Knights of the Order of the Thorn and their many adventures. My god, this intro seems like it belongs in a Saturday morning cartoon from the 80s. And I'm a kid, and I'm all hyped up off of sugar puffs right now. And I don't want to go to school on Monday, and this is becoming autobiographical. But yeah, this is a pretty damn fine intro. young bard it's quite a tune you're playing well if you think that's impressive mr robed man you should have heard the intro that was just playing five seconds ago thank you sir it was written by my father i keep all of his songs in my book of songs and this elvish looking fellow right here or well, maybe he's not an elf maybe his ears just got stuck in a brake press is our hero and he's about to tell us what this game's all about i am on my way to the fairy kingdom to accept the king's challenge that's right ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between we are playing a hardcore game here we're a bard on his quest to accept the fairy king's challenge you want to know why folks you want to know why why because he'll grant us a wish i know not only is he a fairy king, but he's like a fairy godmother. It's a two-for-one special there, folks. One never knows what the fairy king has in mind for his challengers from year to year, but it is always a true contest of honor. The truth is, I need inspiration. You see, I want to compose the greatest ballad ever written. The king's challenge would make a very fitting event to compose a song about indeed. I've always wanted to be a brave and good bard like my father. Now is my chance. Who was your father? His name was Donald Galway. He was a bard, but also served in... Ah, I knew your father. He served the Order of the Thorn well. I heard him sing once in Glen Morgana. His voice inspired the weary when we thought we couldn't go on. 
That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're a protagonist living in the shadow of his awesome dead father, who was not only an incredible warrior for this Order of the Thorn that the game's named after, but he was apparently such a genius musician that he could motivate men to do things they never thought they could do just by the power of his music. I know, he must have had some amazing MIDI files. But nevertheless, this doesn't bring our hero down because he's so damn saccharine sweet, I don't think anything could. Thank you, sir. You see... I want to honor his legacy and sacrifice. Aye, I believe you will, son. Well, good luck to you, uh... Finn. I am Finn the Bard. A well-met Finn. Well, I am off to pursue the duties of my cloak. Peace be with you, Finn. You too, brother... Owen. My name is Brother Owen. It was a pleasure to meet you. You as well, you. Hey, Finn, his name's Owen, not Ewan. He just said it. I don't know, perhaps Finn's just trying to be a little bit cocky here. Oh, thanks, brother Owen, Ewan, whatever Mr. Fancy O for bringing up my awesome dead dad who I'll never live up to unless I do live up to him by the end of the game. But come on, rub salt into the wounds. Where's his mother? I really don't know. We got another protagonist with an awesome dead dad and no mama to speak of. Maybe she was awesome too. Too awesome to even speak about. So anywho, to hits three weeks later, we've made it to the fairy kingdom. It's just some tree on top of a hill with a bunch of Stonehenge stuff around it. It looks mystical and spectacular. It also looks like a prog rock album cover. Throngs of people came from all over Cran Naoim, the home of the fairy court, to discover what this year's challenge would be. The hopeful challengers all assembled in the throne room of the fairy court to hear what King Quillhound had to say. So pray tell Mr. Narrator what did the fairy king have to say. And oh yeah, by the way, and get used to that man's mellow voice because the narrator talks a lot in this game. In fact, you have to barely do any reading at all. And sarcasm aside, it's kind of fantastic because it does feel like you are playing a living fairy tale. Or like a movie about a fairy tale where there's a narrator that talks a lot. Like me. Okay, let's cut to the chase. Welcome, challengers. I am pleased to see so many of you come forth. Once every ten years, I issue a call for the best and brightest of my subjects. Today, the seven of you have answered, and I am honored by your presence in my court. Now there can be no debate that this man is most definitely the king of the fairy kingdom. I mean the man has monarch butterfly wings on him. That's pretty on the nose right there. This year, I have created a challenge that while quite simple in concept, should prove to be most taxing and adventurous for you. My wife, your queen, has volunteered to be hidden somewhere in this land until a champion can find her. Well, this should be fairly simple. Just found the place with the royal entourage. After all, hiding hasn't worked out very well for queens in the past. And just ask Mary Antoinette. She is hidden within the boundaries of our lands. From the path exiting the realm to the east, to the edge of the spider forest to the west. Within these vast and varied locales, she could be hidden anywhere. Wow, that sounds like a blurb you'd read on the back of the box. I wonder if I need Sound Blaster to run this game. The prize for finding the queen is the same as it ever was. The champion will win the right to one wish from your king. Whatever is within my power to grant. And the title of champion of the fairy realm. So, could we wish to become king? Or better yet, could we wish for the fairy kingdom to become a democratic socialist republic? What, I'm just thinking out loud. This task will not be easy. But I have faith that one of you seven brave challengers will find her. You know, it's kinda nice to actually have a fantasy story where the maiden's not in peril. The queen's fine. She's just helping her husband do some challenge thing that apparently this fairy kingdom does every 10 years. So let's go ahead and meet the challengers. After all, considering that this only happens once a decade, these seven should be the cream of the crop for this fantasy world. Now, if you please, let us make introductions. Tell me of yourself. I wish to know something of my challenges. Your Majesty, I am Gowan, Knight of the Kingdom of Stoneland. I am the bravest and most feared knight in my kingdom, and I have come to win this challenge, as is my destiny. That also sounds like his destiny is to wet himself pretty soon if he keeps holding it in. Man, just let it go. Welcome to the challenge, Sir Gowan. Oh yes, absolutely, Majesty. They called me Chaka, and I'm from the fairy realm myself. And well, I just thought it'd not be fun. I've always wanted to go on a quest. A once a decade competition, and this is the best a fairy realm can come up with. Best and brightest here, folks. Best and brightest. Or, hear me out now. 
Perhaps everyone in the Ferret Kingdom thinks that this whole thing's a royal excess and they're just too cool to do it. And this is the only guy that would show up. And the rest of us are just tryhards. Trying to impress our dead awesome dad who will never love us because he's dead and was way cooler than we'll ever be. Welcome, Chaka. Pleased to meet you, Your Majesty. I'm Snowy and this is my friend Red. We have dedicated our lives to helping other people. So finding the queen would be the ideal task for us. Well, I mean, she doesn't really need help. She knows where she's at. She's just playing pretend, you know, helping the competition. I'm just saying your over-eagerness to help people makes me a little bit nervous. Oh, yes, Your Majesty. It would be amazing and fantastic. Now I'm suspicious about happy-go-lucky perky people. And these two. My God, they're so saccharine sweet. I got type 2 diabetes just looking at them. It's a pleasure to have such fine ladies in this year's challenge. Welcome. Wait a minute, I got a question about how this competition works now. Are these ladies like a package deal? If they win, do they get only one wish? Or do each of them get a wish? I'm just saying, I could bring a friend along too. I want more wishes. I am Fowlin, your majesty. Friend of the fairy realm and adventurer. I've heard of your exploits, friend Fowlin. You must tell me one day about your legendary defeat of the evil Lord Sinister. It is a story that I'd very much like to hear from you. Well, damn, we competing against a legendary evil slayer. I mean, I was feeling pretty good about our odds when our competition included Mr. About to Piss Himself, guy who may be Forrest Gump for fairies, and those creepy twins who are this close to pulling a carry. But now that we're dealing with a legendary hero, we're going to have to really, really strum our guitar hard, aren't we? I am Abaddon, High Priest of the Kingdom of Rosette. I was sent by your brother, the King of Rosette participate in this challenge yeah just based off of this guy's appearance and how he's talking you want to bet he's gonna be an arrogant prick and also the fairy king's brother is a king of another realm i really hope they have their succession nailed down pretty firmly because god knows you want to avoid a war in a fairy kingdom over a succession to struggle of who's the heir to the throne my brother always sends his best i am sure you are most welcome here I shall be the one to find your queen, Majesty, have no doubt. Do not let pride stand in your way, Abaddon. It is perhaps a fatal flaw in some. Nonetheless, I wish you my best. Well, talk about a benevolent despot giving you an underhanded compliment. Yeah, I don't think anyone wants to see Baldi, I'm the guy who's working for your brother, Keen, win this thing. Hello, Your Majesty. My name is Finn, and I only just arrived in this land. I am a bard. I travel and play songs for my lodgings and food. Hello, Finn. A bard is always welcome in my realm. Although I must say, most minstrels are better dressed. Wow, this king's really giving out the backhanded compliments. Just give him a snooty voice, and you got yourself a villain here, folks. Oh, I must say, most minstrels are better dressed. <laughs> I apologize for my attire, Your Majesty. I was waylaid on my journey by bandits, and I was only left with my traveling clothes. What, really? Well, why didn't we see that? What, just one moment he's hanging out in the inn and says hi to a monk, and then he's mugged? Is that what happened when the three weeks later popped up on the screen? Because, you know, kind of an important event to leave out. Just saying. The little orphan boy got robbed. Think that'd be part of his character arc. Then later on he meets the bandits. I'm just saying this stuff writes itself. Your attire isn't important, young lad. Only your heart and spirit. Yeah, easy for you to say. You a damn keen. Oh, material things don't matter. I would know. I'm royalty. I own you, this land. A bunch of people do whatever I say. But no, no, really, it's all about your personality and your heart. I mean, not to say I'm going to give up any of these material things like my power. <laughs> Are you crazy? I look forward to hearing you play once the challenge is over. And yeah, we better get a performance fee out of that. What? We don't got any clothes. We got mugged. We need to get new stuff. Now, I wish to thank you all, challengers. Before you leave... I shall offer you each a royal gold coin. This coin is your proof that you are a participant in the King's Challenge. It will not only imbue you with honor and allow you access to places in my kingdom that are often difficult to reach, but you will also be required to present it to the guards to re-enter the village of Cran Naom. Now, to my brave and bright seven, let the challenge begin! Said the King unironically with Chucker still in the room. What? His name's Chucker. His mama must have hated him. Well, the game begins. Time to find the queen. 
And this video ends. I'm trying to do my impersonation of the narrator. Man, that is a good voice, though. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I've been some guy, and part two's coming very soon. You can click down here to just go ahead and skip to it, or you can go back to some other video over here. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>